the Barclays Center with J. Calderon Boxing Talk. You already know what it is. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, J. Calderon, Stan Clee Entertainment, and we're about to get into this week's boxing tour. We're going to talk about the upcoming fights coming up this Saturday, March the 10th, but we're also going to do a recap over the fights that took place this past weekend. First up is the IBF Junior Welterweight title at 140 pounds with undefeated champion Sergey Lipowitz against Mikey Garcia, the lightweight champion of the world, moving up to 140 pounds for this opportunity to become a four-division world champion. This is a great matchup. Style-wise, I like this fight a lot. I think both of these guys are action-packed fighters. They're going to come and they're going to bring it. They're going to throw a lot of punches in this fight. Both guys are very aggressive. Very come forward fighters. Mikey Garcia is a very good boxer puncher. He sets up his punches with his jab. He throws some beautiful combinations. And I see Lipowitz as a very physical fighter. A guy that likes to come in there like a bull. Very strong. This guy likes to get on the inside. Work his way in with the jab. And he likes to go to the body. An excellent body puncher. He has a very good trainer. And former world champion James Buddy McGurk. Who has done a great job. Lipowitz is a guy that has pretty good decent punching power. A very good over hand right that he likes to just let it go I mean he throws this punch repeatedly and Mikey Garcia is gonna pick up on it you know and Mikey Garcia is a very good technical fighter very smart guy excellent ring IQ he likes to control the tempo when he's in the fight we saw what he did against Adrian Bona who is a guy that's a very talented gifted fighter but doesn't have the mental toughness a guy like Sergey Lipinets is a guy that's more mentally tough Mikey gotta watch out with this guy in the inside game because you know we've seen Mikey hit the canvas before I wouldn't be surprised if he gets caught with a good shot and goes down but Mikey Garcia has a pretty good chin he always gets up dust himself off and get right back into the fight. I see this fight as a technical battle for Mikey Garcia because he does have those boxing skills. He does set up those punches very nicely, but this is going to break out to a war sooner than later. I see a fight breaking out perhaps in the first round because Lipinets is going to jump right on him once that bell rings and Mikey's going to try to control this fight at a distance and try to outbox him for the first couple of rounds and then it's going to go into a slugfest because Mikey likes to get into a fight and he could definitely bang and he has that punching power, that hard-hitting knockout power that if he could catch Lipinets, it could be good night for the champion. But we got to see if the champion has that solid chin because I know he has the determination. I know he has a strong willpower to really push this fight and give Mikey a tough tough competitive fight but I see Mikey Garcia winning a unanimous 12 round decision if Lipinet's chin could hold up if not then Mikey Garcia is just going to take apart this guy break him down systematically and then knock him out perhaps in the eighth round now Lipinet's is a guy that cuts and bruises very easily so I wouldn't be surprised if a cut opens up on him and he starts to swell up real quickly when Mikey starts landing those big shots and I like to see Mikey Garcia Get him with the sneaky uppercut on the inside because he is a slightly shorter man than Mikey Garcia. And when he comes on inside, Mikey can unload with those beautiful uppercuts and catch Lipinets coming in. And it could definitely hurt the champion and put him in a lot of trouble. But I like Mikey Garcia a lot in this fight. And I have him winning and making history as a four-division world champion. Now, we know that Mikey Garcia has said that after this fight, he's going to drop back down possibly to the 135-pound division or stay at 140 and see if Jorge Linares is going to move up to challenge him for the new world title that he's about to capture. Now, I know there's been negotiations with top rank and golden boy for Vasily Lomachenko to take on Jorge Linares, and that's a fight matchup that is a very intriguing matchup. It's a very good matchup, but I think that golden boy is stalling on this fight. I think they don't really want to make this fight. I think Mikey Garcia and golden boy have already have an agreement. I think it's just a bargaining tool to just make a few adjustments in their deal between Mikey Garcia and Jorge Linares to make that fight possible because HBO is definitely interested in that fight. I think it's a fight where there's a lot more money on the table for those guys to make. And it's a fight that the fight fans definitely want to see. And I definitely want to see that fight. These guys really want to fight each other. And I believe that that fight is going to happen next, perhaps over the summertime on the West Coast, perhaps at the StubHub Center, because it's a great matchup. And these guys are both Latinos and they got a big fan base over there on the West Coast side. Now, on ESPN, Top Rank is putting on a card with WBO featherweight champion Oscar Valdez defending his 126-pound title against former super bantamweight champion 
Scott Quigg from England. And Scott Quigg is a guy that's moving up in weight. He's perhaps the best opponent that Oscar Valdez has ever faced in his career. Oscar Valdez, I like him. He's a young kid. He's still developing. I'm still not 100% sold on him. I think he has some flaws, but he's a very entertaining fighter. And this is the best fighter that he's ever fought. Quigg is a good, solid fighter. He's being trained by Freddie Roach right now. He's working over at the Wild Card Gym, and he's putting in some very good work with some good sparring, and I believe that he's going to bring a very good, tough fight for Oscar Valdez. This is a very good test at the next level for a guy like Oscar Valdez to really prove himself and keep his undefeated record intact and really shine in this fight to go into the next phase in his career as a top fighter at 126 pounds. But I see this as a very close fight, a very competitive fight. Both guys putting on a give and take war won't be surprised if I see Scott Quick hit the canvas because Valdez has a good hard hitting power but he also likes to fade down the stretch he has some defensive flaws he gets hit a lot but he's an all action fighter so it's going to be a fan friendly fight for boxing fans and I see this fight going into the 12th and final round with Oscar Valdez winning a unanimous decision and retaining his WBO featherweight title now, we're going to do a recap over the fights that took place over this past weekend. First, we're going to start off with the heavyweight matchup, one of the best fights in the heavyweight division that was made between WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder defending his title for the seventh time against Luis King Kong Ortiz. This was a matchup that I had the pleasure to be there at the Barclays Center to watch this fight live. I got to see this fight up close and personal and I also got to review the fight on television and it was a great matchup, man. I got to tell you, the first couple of rounds wasn't that exciting. It was not that much to be talked about. Luis Ortiz boxed very beautifully in the beginning. He was landing that jab. He was showing those boxing skills. You know, Wilder was just pouring with his jab. He wasn't even really inflicting punishment with that long-ranging jab. He wasn't getting that jab off. He was just sticking it out there as a range finder, and he wasn't landing anything significant in those first four rounds. First time I saw it, when I saw it live, I gave him the benefit of the doubt, giving him two out of the four rounds. But after watching the fight very closely on television, I switched my scorecards around and I gave the first four rounds to Luis Ortiz. It wasn't until the fifth round where Deontay Wilder, at the end of the round, caught him with a beautiful right hand that dropped Luis Ortiz. And he shook him up. He had him hurt, but Luis was able to escape that round because the bell had just rang and time had ran out. But Wilder picked up in the sixth round. He started on a low with his right hand, started to land that punch very cleanly, and we saw Wilder getting a lot more aggressive because he smelled blood. He knew that he had Luis Ortiz in trouble, but Luis Ortiz was able to get through the sixth round, and he came back with a great seventh round. He was able to hurt Deontay Wilder, and this was his biggest moment. This was the moment that he had to seize. He started to unload with a lot of combination punches. He was landing cleanly because the first couple of rounds, he didn't land anything cleanly, but the shots he landed in this seventh round were some hellacious shots that he caught Deontay Wilder with, and I got to give Wilder credit. This man has a chin. We know that he's been rocked. We know that he's been hurt, but he does not go down. He has a solid chin. He can take a punch. Wilder was able to survive this seventh round. I had this fight when I saw it live at the Barclays Center. Very close going into the tenth round. And I had Deontay Wilder up five rounds to four because of the knockdown. Now, a lot of people would have scored a 10-8 round in the seventh round when King Kong had Wilder badly hurt. But I didn't. I just gave him the round. He didn't go down, so I didn't score it a 10-8 round. But in the 10th round, you saw Luis kind of slowing down and Wilder getting more aggressive and taking more chances. And he's just started to land some big bombs on Luis Ortiz and put Luis Ortiz down. Luis Ortiz was in very big trouble because the bronze bomber started to let go of those big wild shots. And he landed a beautiful uppercut and dropped Luis Ortiz where the referee just called the fight right there and waved it off because Luis Ortiz was badly hurt. He wasn't getting up after that. And you got to tip your hats off and give respect and credit to Deontay Wilder. This was the biggest fight of his career. This was the moment of truth to really show that he is one of the best heavyweights in the division. He knocks off King Kong, and now he retains his title for the seventh time over a three-year span as the champion. He's looking for the big matchup against Anthony Joshua. He's flying over to the UK to watch Anthony Joshua versus Joseph Parker in their title unification matchup between two undefeated champions, trying to settle their score and try to narrow it down to the two best fighters in the heavyweight division. We all know that at the end of the day, it's going to be Anthony Joshua 
versus Deontay Wilder. And I don't think Joseph Parker is going to upset those plans. But I see this fight as a great possibility to happen later on this year. And the fight fans are salivating for this fight because it's one of the most exciting and greatest heavyweight matchups that we've seen in a very long time. And we can't wait for this fight to take place. It could take place either in the UK in front of 90,000 fans or it could take place here in the United States, either in Las Vegas or in the New York area. It's going to sell out. It's going to be a big fight. It's going to perhaps be a pay-per-view worthy type fight because it's nothing but excitement and bombs away action when you get these two young, very big men that are undefeated for all the title belts to become the undisputed heavyweight king of the division. And you can't knock that. This is what it's all about. And we haven't seen something like this since the times of Mike Tyson and also guys like Evander Holyfield, Riddick Bowe, Lennox Lewis. These type of heavyweights right here. So I know fight fans are definitely excited about this fight. The heavyweights are back. And I gotta say congratulations to Deontay Wilder. I was going for Luis Ortiz in this fight. I thought he had the better skills to win this fight. But Deontay Wilder proved two things to me in this fight. He proved to have the heart of a champion and also to have the better chin than Luis Ortiz. And that's what won him the fight. I'm moving along over to HBO where they had a double header in the light heavyweight division. We saw an impressive performance by WBA light heavyweight champion, Russian undefeated Demetrius Bivo that took on top light heavyweight contender from Cuba, Sullivan Barrera. This is a matchup where we saw the Russian really shine in this fight and dominate Sullivan Barrera throughout this fight. He was looking superb with his jab, showing a very good strong jab, putting his punches together very well. Now Barrera made this a very tough fight. He landed some punches, but he was just basically getting outwork, outclassed in this fight. He caused a cut in Bivo's face and some swelling with repeated head bunts. Well, Bivo showed his composure, set a nice tempo, and took his man apart. In the 12th round, he stepped on the gas, and with his two-fisted punching power, he dropped Sullivan Barrera, who was badly hurt. He got up on his feet, but the referee stopped the fight for a TKO victory for the champion. And my hat's off to Demetrius Bivo because he put on a very good excellent performance and I know that HBO is already hyping him up as the next best light heavyweight in the 175 pound division but this division is loaded with tremendous talent you got guys like IBF champion Arthur Bedevin that's out there Sergey Kovalev who holds the WBO title and who also fought on that card is still one of the top guys in the division and you still have the WBC champion and lineal light heavyweight king in Adonis Stevenson that's out there and Badu Jack has now entered the 175 pound weight division and he's looking to rip that title away from Adonis Stevenson so you know there's so many guys out there in the division for the boat to really step up and take a challenge against any one of these guys but the fight that people are looking for H HBO is targeting is the fight between Sergey Kovalev and Demetrius Bivo because that's the fight that the fight fans want to see. That's the one that HBO is truly interested in, and that's a fight that possibly could happen later on this year. Now, Sergey Kovalev fought in the main card. He had a pretty easy fight against another Russian fighter by the name of Igor McCullen. This fight basically. Sergey Kovalev did everything he wanted to do in this fight, dominating the fight. It was just basically target practice for him, giving this guy a beating, opening up some cuts, and it was a bloody mess for the challenger. And in the seventh round, the referee stopped the fight on cuts, and Sergey Kovalev easily defended his WBO light heavyweight champion. And now he says that if the money is right, he's willing to step in to unify the titles against the WBA champ, Demetrius Bivo. But that's my final analysis on the upcoming fights this weekend and also my recap on the fights that just took place. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning into this channel right here, J. Calderon Boxing Talk. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit that little red button, put your email information in so you get all my notifications once I drop a new video. Also hit that like button, that share button, make some comments, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram and join the Facebook boxing group page all under the same name. Jay Calderon Boxing Talk. I'm Jay Calderon, Stand Clear Entertainment. Thanks for your support. Keep watching and please subscribe.